In this section, I am going to discuss span of a set of vectors. Suppose that we have vectors v1, v2, up to vn. The span of this set of vectors is simply the set of all linear combinations of the vectors in S. In other words, the span of S is just the set of all possible combinations. We have the vectors v1, v2, up to vn. You multiply that with scalars, a1, a2, up to an, and you just add all of them. So this set is called the span of a set S. I will not prove this theorem, but it turns out that the span of a given set of vectors is actually a subspace of V. The proof of this is an exercise. Let me just give you a hint. Let us recall the subspace test theorem. How do we check if something is a subspace of a set? We check if it is just closed under vector addition and whether it is closed under scalar multiplication. And how do you proceed there? You get an arbitrary element here. You get two arbitrary elements. Let's call this W and V. They are arbitrary elements in span of V and show that W plus V is again in the span of V. Here, you're going to get an arbitrary scalar K and a vector W in the span of V. This is in span of V and K is a scalar. And you will show that K times W is again in span of V. I will leave that as an exercise. How does the span of a single vector look like? If we have a single vector v and we want to get its span, since we only have one vector here, we are going to multiply it by a scalar. There are no other vectors. So therefore, what is this set? This set is the set of all scalar multiples of v. So that is another interpretation of that. Here I have my vector negative 2, 2. The vector negative 2, 2 is just this vector which always starts at the origin and the terminal point is at the ordered pair negative 2, 2. So recall that I will always refer to a vector as a column vector. I will no longer use ordered pair notation. How will the scalar multiples look like? Well, of course, if we form the set AU, where A is any real number, what if A is equal to 1? Of course, if A is equal to 1, it will just be the same vector. If I make A equals 2, that would be that vector. So that's the vector negative 4, 4. If A is equal to 3, we have that vector, negative 6, 6, and so on. So as I make it bigger, of course, it becomes longer. As A increases, the length of your vector increases as well. Now, if I play that, my A's here, the constants that you are seeing here, a is from negative 20 to 50. So as you can see, the span of U is just the line passing through the origin and the point negative 2, 2. Next, let's look at the span of two vectors, U and V. So my U here is the vector negative 2, 2. And my V is the vector 2, 3. This is my vector 2, 3. Let us form all possible combinations AU plus BV where A and B are real numbers. So suppose that my A is here. I am changing the values of A and B here. My A is 5. This is 5U. And let's, let me make it 2. How about if B is 2? So this is my 5u and this is my 2v, this longer one here. What is the sum? The sum would be this vector. That is the sum. 
So if I change my A's, of course, if the coefficient of U changes, the sum will also change. As I change here, it also changes. So now if I play this, my slider over here, you will now see how the span of U and V look like. Now if I play this, meaning to say that the constants will change, this black arrow here, remember, is your AU plus BV. What does it trace? It is simply the entire R2, correct? Look at that again. See? It's just tracing the entire plane. Alright? So therefore, in this case, so what we had here was that if you're given two vectors in R2, and of course, I am assuming that those two vectors are not scalar multiples of each other. Alright? The span of those two vectors will be the entire R2. How will the span of two vectors in R3 look like? So here I have my vector u. It's this blue vector here. This is the vector 1, 2, 3. My v, the red vector, is the vector negative 2, 1, 0. Again, I want to form all possible combinations au plus bv where a and b are real numbers first let's look at the scalar multiples au this is my au a is here let me just play that a little bit so as you can see since a here is negative it's the it's running through the opposite direction. It's going towards positive. Okay, there you go. So those are all your possible AUs. Let me stop that. And then, let us look at the possible BVs. This is my BV. Let me play the slider for B so that we can see what will happen if we change B there again also so here b is positive so it's going that direction if b is negative it will go to the other direction we want to see how the sum would look like so that's our vector w plus c let me put this to Alright, so here, this brown line here is the sum AU plus BV. Because here, W is AU, my C here is BV. This vector D is the sum AU plus BV, wherein in this particular case, your A is negative 0 0.5 and your constant B is 2.8. If I change that, see, it changes as well. So now I want to play the sliders here so that it will run from negative 20 to 20 for A and negative 20 to 20 also for B. And let's see how will the sum AU plus B will look like. Let's zoom out. So if it's like that, we cannot actually see what is, what is that set. But if you look at this one, that set is actually the plane. Look at this one. Now you can look at the brown line. It's actually a line which always lies on this blue plane over here. Can you see that? And what is this plane here? Let me stop that slider. 
and let me just set my a to 1 and b to 1 so we will just see u and v so what is this plane over here this plane over here is the plane which passes through the origin and contains these two vectors u and v here that is my formula here the plane containing 0 0 and the vector u and v so that is how the span of two vectors in r3 look like here is what we have seen in the previous example if u and v are vectors in r3 then the span uv is a plane through the origin which contains the vectors u and v Now take note that this works only as long as u and v are not scalar multiples of each other. Let us recall the vector space P2, the set of polynomials with degree less than or equal to 2. We have seen that this is a vector space. Let's get one vector here, this polynomial, 1 plus x plus 4x squared. And let us determine whether this polynomial lie in the span of this two vectors. How will we know? If something lies in the span of a set of vectors, to determine if P is a linear combination of these two polynomials here, let me call this V1 because they are just our vectors. We want to check if we can write P as a linear combination of V1 and V2. We want to know if we can find such scalars A1 and A2. So we have... 1 plus x plus x squared is equal to your a1. We don't know what that is. I'm just plugging in. Okay. When we have two polynomials that are equal, they will be equal if and only if the corresponding coefficients of the variables would be equal. What does that mean? So for example, let us equate the constants. On the left hand side, your constant is 1. On the right hand side, what would be your constant? It will be a1 plus 3a2. Next, what would be the coefficient of x? On the left hand side, the coefficient of x is 1. On the right hand side, it would be, here I have an x, so the coefficient would be 2a1 plus 5a2, this one. Lastly, the coefficient of x squared. Coefficient of x squared here is 1. Here it's negative a1 plus 2a2. So here is our system of equation. Let us form the augmented matrix. We have 1, 3. Everything here is 1, 2, 5, negative 1, 2. What can you observe here, class? Look at the entries in the augmented matrix. Look at this one. 1, 2, negative 1. And those are exactly the coefficients of V1. 1, 2, negative 1. This would be the constant coefficient of x and then x squared. Look at that. 1, 2, negative 1, and then 3, 5, 2. 3, 5, 2, and 1, 1, 4. Look at that. 1, 1, 4. Let us now see if this system has a solution. We have R3 plus R1. That is my new R3. This becomes 0, 5, 5. Let me turn this to 0 as well. R2 minus 2R1. That would be my new R2. So it's going to be 0, 
5 minus 6 is negative 1. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, 0, 5, 5. So take note that R3 is a scalar multiple of R2. So when we have R3 plus 5 R2, we will obtain a row of zeros. And this will become positive. We can just eliminate this row of zeros. There are no inconsistencies here because we have no pivot in the last column. So that's okay. You have pivots in each column. So therefore, this one has exactly one solution. This means that this is for A1, remember? This is for A2. So we have that. A2 is equal to 1 from the second row and A1 plus 3A2 is equal to 1. A1 is equal to 1 minus 3 times 1 because A2 is 1. Get that A1 is negative 2. So therefore, yes, I can now remove this negative 2 and this is 1. So it's negative 2V1 plus V2. What's the answer to our question? Does P lie in the span of these two vectors? Yes. How about if we have this one? My P is 1 plus 5x plus x squared, but I still have the same polynomials that we had earlier. So now we already know the shortcut. The augmented matrix would be 1 from here, 1, 2, negative 1, 3, 5, 2. And this time around, we have 1, 5, 1. R3, let's add that with R1 to get our new R3. Zero five two. I now turn this to 0, so we have R2 minus 2 R1, that would be my new R2. I have 0, 5 minus 6 is negative 1, 5 minus 2 is 3. I will multiply R2 by negative 1. And lastly, we now turn this to 0 by having R3 minus 5R2. That would be my new R3. Five minus five is zero, and two plus fifteen is seventeen. What is happening here? We have a pivot at the last column. There is no solution here. Or if you want, you can look at this row over here. This is saying that zero is equal to seventeen, and that is a contradiction. So therefore, the answer here is no. This vector P does not lie on this span. Next, suppose now that we are in M22, we're given this vector, a 2 by 2 matrix, and we want to know also if it lies in the span of these two vectors. Is it true that, this is what we're checking, that we can find scalars E1 and E2 such that V is equal to E1U plus E2W. So let us form that. A1, my u is 1, negative 1, 2, 1, plus A2, 2, 1, 1, 0. We have A1 plus 2, A2. I'm now combining. And then I have negative A1 plus A2. 2A1 from here, plus A2 and A1. But this is equal to V, and V is 
1, 3, negative 1, 1. When are two matrices equal again? If their corresponding entries are equal. This would mean that 1 is equal to A1 plus 2A2. That's the 1-1 one, one entry. The 1-2 one, entry, negative 1 is 2A1 plus A2. This entry 3 is equal to negative A1 plus A2. The 2-2 two, two entry 1 is equal to A1. Let us write the corresponding augmented matrix. This means that we have 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, negative 1, negative 1, 1, 3, and so this are for A1 and A2. And then this is for your constant. What can you observe, class? In the resulting matrix. Look at the column. 1, 2, negative 1, 1. Look at that. It's just your matrix U. 1, 2, negative 1, 1. You just put it here. And look at this. 2, 1, 1, 0. Again, this one you just turned it into one column matrix. And 1, negative 1, 3, 1. This is your Vector V, 1, negative 1, this one, you put that there again. Alright, so therefore, to determine whether V lies in the span of U and W, we just have to check if this one has a solution. I just wrote this matrix here. Let's turn this to 0. My R3, I will add it to R1. What else? I have R4. I will subtract it from R1. And my R2, I will subtract to R1. So I have 2 minus 2 is 0. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. I will add R3 with R1. I get 0, 3, 4. And R4 minus R1, this is 0. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 1 minus 1 is 0. Let me add R2 to R3. We have... But take note here, class, that if I swap this row, row 3 to R4, what will I obtain? I will have a pivot at the last column. Or actually, just by looking at this, you're now saying that 0 is equal to 1, which is a contradiction. So therefore, the answer is no. V does not lie in the span of U and W.